Okay, we are going to talk about problems 31 through 33. So the 31 says, find the amount in an account if $5,500 is invested 15 years at 8.45% compounded quarterly. And then for the second part, 8.45% compounded continuously. So if it's compounded quarterly, we need to apply this formula. And so then I am trying to find the amount in the account. So A is unknown. P is my investment, which is 5,500. And then the number one, my rate is actually 0 0.0845. In is the number of times uh, compounded per year. So quarterly means it will be compounded four times. And so I have four times t, but I know the time, the time is 15 years. So since everything on this right hand side is um, just orders of operations on numbers, I can type everything on that right hand side in my, in my calculator. So 5500 parenthesis 1 plus fraction 0 0.0845 over 4 close the parentheses, raise it to 4 times 15. And if I hit enter, I get 19279.5. And if I round it to the nearest cent, it'll be 57 cents. So that should be the amount in the account if compounded quarterly. Now for part B, we're going to use a different formula because it's compounded continuously. And the formula we're going to use here is this. So A, I do not know. P is my initial investment, which is 5,500. E is a number in the calculator, 2.78, and keeps going. Rate is 0 0.0845, and time is 15. Again, same thing as before. All of these are numbers. This is not a variable. It's a number, kind of like pi, right? So I can type that all into the calculator. And I get 19535.7. And this second 8 will change the first 8 into a 9. And so that's what I get for those two particular um, parts there. So now let's move on to number 32. So number 32 says the half-life of cesium the 137 is 30 years if 20 grams are present now how much will be left after this many years this many years and this many years well the only way to do that is to figure out what the equation is first okay and we know that the equation follows a formula um, something like y equals y naught e r t and if it's a growth problem, the R will be positive. And if it's a decaying problem, then the R will be um, negative. And since they are talking about half-life, most likely this thing is decaying, okay? And it's going to take 30 years for it to get to half of its initial amount. So it does tell me that there are 200 grams present now. So I know what the initial um, number is here. It's going to be 200 okay and then we're gonna have e we don't know what the rate is and we don't know what the time is but in order for us to have a sufficient equation to use for these problems um, what we need to have is we need to have the rate here so we need to be able to solve this equation to figure out what the rate is so we're going to use that information they gave us in the first sentence to try to find out what the rate is so if the half-life is 30 years, then that means that after 30 years has passed, I will only end up with half the number of grams that I started with. Since I'm starting with 200, that means I would only have 100 grams left. If I divide both sides by the coefficient of E, I get 0 0.5 equals E to the 30R. 
And then to solve for E, I would have to apply the ln on both sides, not solve for E, but to eliminate the exponential E. And then these would cancel, leaving me with just, I can go a little bit higher than that. It would leave me with ln of 0 0.5 equal to 30r. And then if I divide both sides by that coefficient of r, I get that r equals the ln of 0 0.5 over 30. Now if I type that in my calculator, notice that I'm going to have to round in order to give them the rate. I don't want to round because it might throw my answers off a little bit. So when I write my equation, I'm going to leave the r in its fraction form. So the equation that I need to use here is e to the ln of 0 0.5 over 30 times t. This is my equation that I'm going to use to figure out the answer to parts a. So for part a, it says how much is left after 30 years. This one I actually don't need to, put, to use the function because they've already told me how much was left. They said that the half-life was 30 years, which means in 30 years I'm only going to have half of this, right? So I know the answer should be 100, but if you want to use the equation just to verify, that is okay. So let's go ahead and type in what happens when we do 30 years here. So let me clear this out, 200e to the fraction ln of 0 0.5 over 30, and on the side I'm going to plug in 30. And sure enough, I do get 100, so 100 grams would be left. For part B, they're asking me how much would be left after 120 years. So again, same formula plugging in 120. So my calculator, I'm not going to busy myself with retyping that in there. I'm just going to highlight it, copy it, and change this to 120. And now we get that there would only be 12.5 grams after 120 years. And then finally, part C. I'm going to scoot over here a little bit because I don't want to run into the other problem. How much would I have after 43 years? So again, now we're plugging in 43. So 43 years does occur sometime between 30 years and 120, right? Probably closer to um, 30 years. So the answer should be a little bit closer to 100, but not quite 100. So let's see what we get there. Oh, i got to copy that again. And now I'm going to plug in 43. And we get 73 points. Normally the instructions will tell you what to round to. Um, but for this problem, I'm probably going to round just to the hundredths place. So the 4 will not change the 5. So I should end up with 74.05 grams. And that is the end of number 32. Now number 33 says to solve this equation and give an exact answer. Now, you can get rid of logs using the inverse of a log, which is an exponential. However, that method cannot be applied until you only have one logarithm on each side, or no more than one logarithm on each side because this side doesn't have a logarithm and that's okay. But on this side I do. So I need to combine these two into one single logarithm. And the property we have to use to do that is the sum property, which means I'm going to take this argument and multiply it by that argument. Then, since this is a log base 2, I can use the exponential base 2 to cancel out the log. So I will have 2 raised to log base 2 of this side, and then 2 raised to this side. 
then the log and the exponential will cancel each other out, leaving me with just the argument x times x plus 4. And 2 to the fifth is 32. So I'm left to solve this equation. Here, if I distribute x, I get x squared plus 4x equal to 32. This is a quadratic equation, which means I do have to have it equal to 0. So we have x squared plus 4x minus 32. And then if I factor that, I get x plus 8x minus 4 equal to 0. And then if I set each factor equal to 0, I will get x equals negative 8 and x equals positive 4. Now what I have to do is make sure that I don't have an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is when we solve everything, all the algebra is correct, but the, prop, but the answer doesn't check out. So remember, for logarithms, your base and your um, arguments cannot be negative. My bases are 2, and those will never be negative, so I don't have to worry about checking that. But when I plug x into here or here, I will end up with a negative argument, which means that negative 8 cannot possibly be a solution. If I plug in 4 here and here, I end up with positive arguments, which means 4 is the only solution, and so 4 will be the only value that I include in my solution set.